is baking the action program. Um, and I coordinate them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're all familiar with Nick. If not, uh, he's from the East Bay Community Program Action, like he said. Uh, they are our partners at Roger Williams Law School, so we work in tandem with them to do the VITA program. And he's pretty much going to be on all your sites um, and just helping you, so get used to him, get familiar with him, for those of you who don't know. And um, yeah, he'll be, mod he'll be, uh, what do you say? He'll be taking charge of today's uh, meeting. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. He'll be making the presentation today. Yeah, yeah, definitely <coughs> looking forward to input from Joe and Ryan if they have any. Uh, for sure, so I'm always talking. And any of the returners, too, um, if any of you want to speak up, just raise your hand, call out, doesn't really matter. We're all really normal here. Um, so, yeah, um, the VITA coordinator, my name is Nick, and I just wanted to go around and just get your name, especially while we're setting up, looks like we're all set. Um, but I just wanted to kind of get everyone's name. So that way, as we move, progress through getting you all ready and whatnot, um, <coughs> it'll help me remember um, along the way, because I'm definitely big on remembering names, and you know, I think it helps us just work together easily. Um, so yeah, we can just start over there. Sorry. <laughs> Kayla, so, you so, yourself. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Kayla, I'm a 3L here. Um, and what say? Oh, that's good. If oh, you have okay. one fact about yourself, you can always share that. Um, Do you like to run, ping, skip running. jump? Um, <laughs> I like basketball. I play basketball, that's a cool fact, there you go. Awesome. Right. <coughs> um, my name is Michael, I'm also a 3L, and I like to spend time with my dogs. All right. <coughs> well, yeah. uh, my name is Shay, I, uh, I'm also a 3L, and I don't know, if you want to know a fact, I guess you can ask me afterwards, I'll be glad to tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Tyler, I'm at 2L. Uh, I don't like to run, ever. <laughs> so, and I don't really like that. So. If you're really big into um, competing or anything, Tyler holds um, the most hours in the VITA program at 86. So if you want to top that at all um, for this year, wow. definitely ask me how you can do that and you can try to topple uh, Tyler's accrued Great. hours. Please don't literally top away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Kim. I'm a 2L. Um, I don't know how to ride a bike. Oh, no. oh, I'm so 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 <laughs> I never acquired the skills. You never forget to ride a bike? I'm a So you don't know about the things that's right in the bike? We know Ryan and Joe already, so I'm just going to give them a break from introducing themselves for now. Oh, all right, all right. Any interesting facts, guys? <coughs> Last night I was at a great event at the West Stadium. Interesting facts. Joining Tax and Business Law Society. Just a little plug there. I thought you said great event. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Amanda, I'm a 2L, and I was actually the general manager of the Awesome. Uh, my name is Jimmy, I'm a 1L, and I don't know, Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's fine, Jimmy from Connecticut. Yeah. Gotta remember that. I'm Josh, I'm a 1L, uh, and I don't know. I'm Samantha, I'm a 3L, I'm Bree, I'm a 1L. Um, I have a master's in entertainment business. Cool. I didn't know that about you, Bree. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Caitlin. I'm a 1L. I was in a color guard, so I like to spin swords for fun. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe when we have some slow time, we can try to see <laughs> show us. Uh, my name's Ryan. I'm a 2L, and my team and I just won Aiden's uh, pub trivia last night. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Patricia, Wilhelmina, Augusta, and Barcavage. <laughs> 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 uh, my name's Caitlin. I'm a 1L, and over the summer I went to Iceland for the second time in my life. Do you have family there? Or? Yeah, my dad's Icelandic, so let's <laughs> visit it again. Awesome. Uh, my name is uh, Justin. I'm 2L. Uh, I'm from Buffalo, New York, but I didn't go to New York City for the first time until last Christmas. Wow. But I've right. seen the Niagara Falls hundreds of times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Michael. I'm a 2L. Uh, I also don't know how to ride a bike. And, uh, <laughs> I, spend, I spend most of my free time studying astrophysics and what lies beyond the cosmos. When you were like six? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Kelsey, and I actually used to compete in mountain bike races. Yeah, when you don't have appointments, you will be working on that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that you used to work in the hospitality industry. I, I've said that a lot, so there's a lot of people that aren't 1Ls that have heard that too many times, unfortunately. But yeah, I did. I used to work in it for about 10 years. So. See, that's a fact by yourself. We do good impressions. Accents. Oh, God, please don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, let's, let's go. I can ride a bike, but I probably won't teach you guys. Um, fun facts, fun facts. I don't really know. Um, speak a little bit of Portuguese. Does anyone speak Portuguese in here? Awesome. We can work on it together and then we can talk to clients. Alright, so 
that's a sneaky way of getting you guys to admit if you have any second second language um, uh, abilities because I need that in Curtis. I introduced you. I'm sorry. You missed the awkward um, introductions. No, he didn't. So, yeah. he he so. so, Curtis, do you have a fun fact about yourself that you can share with everybody? A fun fact? Sure yeah. I, already know. I can think of a couple, but... What, what can you think of? You're a twin. Yes. Um, your twin's in med school at Brown. Yes. You used to be in med school, but now you're a law student. Okay, you have all the facts. <laughs> 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 Anything other than that? Which one is a twin? Oh. For him. For Turtle, right? Yes. Yes, oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought it was like, oh, no, no, no. But, uh, um, he got defensive about it. Fun fact. Uh, um, I played in a movie uh, when I was younger with Whoopi Goldberg. What? Really? Was it Eddie? No. Oh. <laughs> we have to watch it. What movie? That's really cool. That's, that's the operative question. Which one is Sister Act. <laughs> 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 I can tell. Just look my name up. Alright. Wow. Flex. I'm not going to do that though because right. I really want to find out. So during tax yeah, season, I'm definitely going to be asking you yeah, repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to put him on the spot. You all want to check it out. <laughs> All right, so the reason that I asked you all for an important fact is just so that I can remember your name. But knowing your name is an important part of building up um, our team. I think that we'll definitely, well, we'll definitely be switching you around in different places, having you partner up with different people throughout your experience here with Vita. Um, so it's important, and you'll definitely be asking people's names um, repeatedly um, because you won't remember. You'll only be here once a week for like 12 weeks. Um, I'm going to try to remember your name as much as possible. I did memorize everyone's name at one point, or at one point, and then for the rest of the season, I didn't remember it. Um, but I think it's just really important. Um, in volunteer management in general, it's important to you know recognize people and um, tell them how good job they're doing and everything. So I think it's important that you all um, just build a sense of community, and hopefully, I'll be a part of that um, working with you throughout the year. Um, but we're here to talk today about. Um, am I below it? Oh, great. So <laughs> logging into um, the website that you'll be using to take your certifications. And just so you all know, um, I did have a plan to take you through um, one of the certifications. I'm actually not going to take you through it today. It wasn't the whole thing. I was just going to take you through some different questions and whatnot to show you what it looked like. Um, but they actually, today must be the first day that the training is actually open and for you to be able to become certified um, as a tax repair. Which is awesome, I did not expect that today um, at all, but um, kind of a little hesitant. Maybe I'll take you through the basic one since I won't be using that, but um, yeah. Actually, we'll just go through the basic one and run through it a little bit. So today is the first day, so it's good that you're getting your training today. Uh, so just so you know. So this is the home screen for the um, certification training, and the best way you're going to get um, ready for this training is by reading those books very carefully, um, but you don't need to know all of the information. So the first couple sections, skip the Affordable Care Act stuff, um, you're just going to be referencing that throughout the entirety of the tax season, or you're going to be yelling out my name <coughs> so that I can come across the site to talk with you about it. Um, in all honesty, some of the information in these booklets is going to be really um, useless to you until you're actually in a scenario where you need to know it, in which case we'll have um, publication 17, which I commonly refer to as the tax bible, um, as well as these training materials for you to reference. So when you go through, um, be sure to pay attention to the first couple sections. You want to know um, when reading your books about, you know, who can file as a dependent and who, um, what the dependent is or isn't. Um, I guess I should say who because we're dealing with people, not objects, uh, for sure. But you'll want to know. Um, the differences. What, how much income you can have to qualify as a dependent if you're above the age of 24, um, and if you're a student, you know, um, how, what, what age can you be um, as a student before you can't be filed under your parents' taxes anymore. Um, stuff like that. For those of you who have never filed taxes on your own, um, either by doing your own taxes, working with a tax repair and answering questions, um, this is going to be very new to you. So you want to be sure to read those, couple, those first couple sections 
carefully just so that way you can retain that information because those are going to be vital questions that you're asking about come the start of our appointments. It's like the first like 10 minutes. That's just the questions um, and everything just to determine who you're dealing with. Um, because you're going to want to ask, you know, um, does anyone else in the, live with you in the home? If they do, depending on the taxpayer's age, you'll have to get their income as well if they're applying for certain credits or whatnot. So those first couple sections are going to be really important. Later on, as you go through, um, there's going to be different rules and whatnot when you go through these certifications that you're just going to want to reference back to. Um, owning your own business, for example, that's something that you're not going to memorize all of that. If you do, you're amazing. You're like Superman um, in the tax world. That's the fight to sight. Um, and that's what Tyler was, by the way. So you all have, if you want to you know, become a Superman, you're definitely going to have to study up. But um, you'll definitely um, just be using a lot of reference materials. So <coughs> when you go through, um, you're just going to create a login and username, um, which will be over here on create an account. You'll be going under www.linklearncertification.com, as it says at the top. Um, and you'll have that link to in the training materials that are provided for you so you can get ready. Um, You'll go in, you'll create your own password. I recommend using the beginning part of your Roger Williams um, email address and then keeping your password as generic as possible uh, so that way you can get in. I might have to reset this, <laughs> which is incred incredibly embarrassing because I actually just reset it. All right, so I'm going to reset it, so I'll show you to do that. It's fairly straightforward. <coughs> That's because it's this one. You'll also be getting a lot of different usernames, um, too, which is, this is really good. <laughs> Nick and one is a different username I have for um, the actual training portal, which I'll show you, too, when we go through this. But um, you're going to want to write all of that down. We'll collect that information from you, so that way, if there's any point of the tax season that you need to go and study, um, we'll have that materials for you, so that way um, you can reference back to it easily without having to remember off the top of your head. Because I know using a generic password that you use for all of your <coughs> other accounts, whether it's your bank account, um, personal email, whatever, whatever, um, is useful. But, I mean, I wouldn't use it for um, any of this training materials and stuff. Because sometimes you do have to reset it, and then you won't remember what your password was because you had to reset it and you couldn't use the old one that you had. Um, that's happened to me a couple of times. Um, and when you're, you're using different sites, so if any of you are going to be working at the Bristol site and at the Newport site, you will have to create two different usernames, and then you may or may not have to use two different passwords, too, depending on if they've updated the software for this year. Um, so that's just something, too, where you'll be dealing with I had at least five usernames and five different passwords for all of them last year that I was consistently cycling through and changing. Um, and sometimes with your busy schedule and then coming to VITA, it's just not gonna, you're not gonna remember everything. You might leave a paper somewhere. So we're just gonna ask for that up front um, as soon as you create everything um, and before the season starts. So you'll log in um, after creating, uh, creating your username and password um, and selecting who you'll select in there to um, you're just going to select volunteer. Um, there are certain capabilities that you can select staff person or whatever, but then you would need a special um, certification number and all that stuff. So always just select volunteer for everything. Um, and you'll come in. Um, this is, so I wasn't expecting this to actually be ready, um, which is nice. Um, they have everything categorized for you. So you'll want to ignore the basic tab because we are only certifying you to advanced. Um, and advanced covers everything that basic does, it just covers a little bit more on top of it. So you won't be missing anything um, by not choosing any of the basic exams, and you won't be disqualified from doing VITA without having your basic completed. Um, that was something that we made sure a lot about last year. Um, I started two weeks before VITA last year, so when we were like trying to figure out what the certifications were, because um, my boss had never done the program either, we had a billion questions and that was one of them. Um, so just so you're all aware. So you'll come down. You'll want to start with your volunteer standards of conduct, your interview intake and quality review exam, and then you'll move right into the advanced exam. 
You can take the psych coordinator training if you want to. It's actually just a PowerPoint that you cycle through. Um, there's nothing really pertinent to you all in there, so it's just an added five to ten minutes of cycling through PowerPoints until you get to the very end and then you're the psych coordinator. Um, so I would just advise skipping it. Unless you do want to see what we have to deal with and you're interested in that, that's always something you can do, but I will always be at the site, so there's, never, there's no need for anyone else to be a site coordinator. Um, and when you come take the exam, so I'm gonna click on the basic one afterwards, but there is the two, 2017 health savings account um, exam on here down at the very bottom. Um, we're always looking for people to take that exam. It's an extra packet that you would need, and I believe it's been provided to you already in those training materials. Um, it's not required. We're definitely not requiring it of you. But if you do want to be able to provide that extra service to people, we had maybe five clients last year who had an HSA. But for, because, and you really don't study that much, one of the volunteers was like, I don't know why you don't have it, because all I had to do was flip through some things, take the test, and it was really easy. Um, but because it also never comes up very frequently in um, our day-to-day, -day, um, typically the volunteers tend to forget. They tended to forget what the actual training was. Um, but if you ever want to help us out, I'll be taking it so you can always refer clients to me in the future, just so you know. But if you would want to help out clients as well, then I would suggest taking it. Um, the same goes for military, um, international, Puerto Rico, and foreign student exams. Oh, and these are just the circular 230s, just some of the laws. Um, but for these, they have special exams on here. Um, so you can be working, you can work with clients who are from Puerto Rico, international, or are in the military. Um, our site, if you're not qualified to do it, then our site, I mean, not, not you all, in general, as a VITA site, if you're not qualified, no one's qualified to do it, even though their forms might be really standard um, or look similar to a W-2, a 1099, yada, 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 we cannot do it. Um, and we'll actually lose um, the grant and everything for the VITA site, um, which we want to not do. <laughs> uh, so for the, on Puerto Rico, is it your sense that there are a lot of people from Puerto Rico who are in Rhode Island now because of the hurricane and might actually need do you, do you, I guess what I'm asking is, do you see or expect an uptick in need among Puerto Rican um, red people living here? Right? That's a really great question, actually, and it hadn't crossed my mind. Um, no one from the IRS has said anything about um, whether or not um, it would be in our best interest to do that. Typically, we try to tailor everything to our surrounding communities, and in my experience, we only had one person who came to us and was from Puerto Rico, and I think his was a little harder too because he was also in the military. Um, so it was kind of like a little different. Um, but you know, that is a really great question, and I'm going to have to follow up with our um, spec liaison. I'm sure. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for that because that uh, is awesome. Um, and if you all have any questions too, please feel free to type up um, because I definitely need to ask someone about that before. Um, the trainings that we were already. But um, as I said, um, we only had one person who um, was from Puerto Rico last year at the Bristol site. So um, there isn't very much a need within the community um, at our <coughs> site. But because of circumstances that um, would have people coming um, here to our site, we might actually need to um, reevaluate that. And I'll let you all know, um, worst case, uh, not worst case scenario, but um, if there is a need, then I will be taking the exam. So there's not gonna be, you don't have to do um, any additional materials if you don't want to, and I guess that's also what I want to um, address with you all, is that you don't have to take any of these additional exams, but if you want to, because you want to be um, increased your if you want to be able to help the community members more, then bless you. Um, you most certainly can. And definitely encourage that, but I just don't know if you will be using those skills or not. Um, so these are just options here. I know, um, I wanna say it was CCAP, 
are the person who handles the um, grants for the coalition, Rita. She actually deals with a lot of international students and our partner at Federal Hill House, um, Roshni, she works with a lot of international students. So um, they do require that of volunteers, at least one volunteer at the site and the site coordinators do have that training. If, they're, if you're advertising the site or the program here to students, um, definitely feel free to reach out ahead of time if you're gonna be talking to your friends or friends from other departments or whatever and they need to get their taxes done here um, and they need it done for free or whatnot, um, shoot me a heads up, text, email, whatever, so that way I can get the training and that way we can um, accommodate them. But we didn't have too, too many students last year who came to us um, so I don't know if that will increase this year or not with the larger um, group of VITA students, but um, it wouldn't hurt to be prepared. So there are um, all of these different exams that you can take. We're going to take a look at the basic really quick. Um, I just wanted to run through some of the questions with you. Um, maybe we'll even just go through. No, I want to see what's going on. All right, so we'll just go in here. So you have two tries to take these exams. If you don't um, complete them with an 80% or better, then you fail and you can't partake in the program. Um, without, actually, sorry, I lied. You would need to create a new username and password to get the exams done. Um, you can't do the program. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, you would need to um, just talk to us. If you take this exam and you get below an 80% and you're worried that you might miss another question because you're doing just okay with everything, but your grasp on the material isn't that great, um, reach out to us ahead of time so that way we can help you with taking the exam um, because we definitely don't want you to fail a second time and then have to go through recreating everything and take the exam like five more times. It doesn't make any sense. Um, <coughs> yes? Yeah, um, so what Nick just said, if you take the exam one time, so that's not, like, don't start the second time. Just if you failed it the first time, uh, which is below 80%, it's not going to say you failed, but that's the threshold, um, then just don't attempt it a second time. Talk to us, um, and then we'll help you with the process of getting certified. Um, but you do need to attempt it at least the first time. Yeah. Definitely. And you know, you can partner up with people and go through the exam book together. You actually have the physical exam book with you. So the order of the questions might be a little different when you take the exam, but all of them are mostly the same. So you can mark down the book ahead of time. I feel like it's like cheating when I'm telling you that, so I don't know. <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell anyone else about that, right? <coughs> um, but yeah, you can definitely work together. Um, on the exam and everything and just you know you have that written resource there so it should make it easier for you we want this to be easy for you um, while you're still learning the information of course because we don't want you to show up and not be prepared that'd be, that'd be kind of weird uh, <laughs> for sure so I'm just gonna run through the basic exam oh that's one all right so you would go up, you click on the exam and click launch. Um, they have the instructions right there for you, so you can definitely read through. This is the volunteer standards of conduct. You'll also be um, keep providing us a form that you sign with your information on it. Um, not like crazy information, just like, you know, your email address and whatnot. Um, and saying that you passed your, all of your certifications up to the level that we will be placing you um, at. So you'll be passing everything, so you'll be able to be in every position. Um, but we'll just, you start off with this one, then you'd kind of move in a progression um, to the intake and quality review after this one, and then you'll be taking the advanced exam. Um, you could take the basic for fun if you want to. Not fun, just practice, I'm in practice. Um, but I don't recommend it, I would just skip it entirely. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, they'll ask you a question, then you'll pick A, B, C, or D. Um, some of the questions in the, um, the actual exam itself were um, not always um, multiple choice, so I would just be sure on the lookout for that when you take the exam. I'm not gonna redo everything now. Unfortunately, I had the exams done and I was gonna take you through the actual basic exam, but I um, can't do that now. Um, so when you do take it, just be sure to read everything carefully and make sure that none of the questions were changed on you. 
and it's fairly straightforward for the certifications. Um, if you do have any questions, the training materials are there for you to look at. Um, not the training materials, but the packet handout that you were provided, um, instructing you on how to sign it. Um, see you. Um, so do you, any of you have any questions for me about the certifications or um, getting on the website? Okay, cool. So once you get on the website and you are working through everything, um, you're gonna have to, you can click on here to electronically um, approve everything, but we're gonna ask that you print off your certifications to provide for us because we need those um, when we get audited by the IRS. So our IRS liaison will come in one day, unannounced, and say, I'm here for a quality review. I'm gonna be sitting with this group of volunteers um, as they do a quality review or they do intake um, or they're actually preparing a return. So it's something unexpected, um, and they'll ask to see our documentation too. So by the time that the exams are due and your certifications are due, you'll have kind of a week period in order to get that into us. Um, and we'll also hound you down too if you're on site without that paperwork, um, because it's really important. And we would definitely lose the ability to provide the service to the community if um, too many mistakes were made for whatever reason. So we want to mitigate that by having So after that, you would go, you'll be working in the practice lab, um, working on sample returns. We'll be doing a lot of this um, uh, as the um, training takes place coming up in January. Um, we'll be t walking you through returns, um, getting you prepared for dealing with clients and some of the situations that might arise. So. Um, as you um, finish everything, you'll definitely be able to start working on some practice um, scenarios. So you'd go into the practice lab. Um, we'll give you the access code for right now. I don't know if they've updated it or not. So Susie, just so you know, they um, actually released the certifications today. Oh, how perfect. Yeah, so Lucky everyone us. can actually start um, doing everything. So as far as I know, they did not update Yeah, there's a code that we'll give you to get on the practice lab. You don't need it right now since you'll be working on the certifications, but um, you'll have to create a new username and password to get into this one, um, just like all of the others, which I know is kind of a lot, but we'll hold on to that information too, like I said. Um, so you sign in. I'm actually already signed in, so that doesn't really matter. This is what the main screen looks like. Um, the practice lab home. It has additional information here that you can look at stuff, um, so this will be all stuff for the actual um, TaxLayer software. Um, so you don't really have to worry about too much of it, like configuring TaxLayer Pro, not something you have to worry about um, in the installation. Some of the stuff you can look through, um, like creating the e-file, um, electronically filing, stuff like that. I mean, I would definitely peruse. Uh, preparing the return is gonna be important. I would take a look at that information for sure. Um, but it's not something that you definitely, um, that you necessarily won't get without going into the practice lab. So you'll just go in here, click on go to practice lab area. And it's, this is literally the software that um, we'll be using. This is just a means of um, doing returns without it actually being in our, I guess, database. Um, because all of that information that you put in on a tax um, client is retained for not even just the season, but I can still go in now to 2016 and look at all of that information. I'm hoping that they got um, finalized the ability to pull their information up. Um, so from one tax return year to the next, that was something that they were supposed to be working on. Um, I hope that kind of pans out. But basically you'll just go in and this is the software that you use. So we try to work with um, our older volunteers too, so that way they're aware of what the program looks like. Um, and this is all just very, like, very technical stuff. So I would definitely suggest looking at it on your own time um, for sure, but I just wanted to show you all so that you're aware of it um, ahead of time. If you want to go in, I, 
I've gone in and put in my information just so I can be like, oh, what does my tax return look like for this coming year? Um, all right, and this is just letting you know that they're still making changes because um, it might affect your return. So for all of this beginning information, um, the basic information, your filing status, your personal information, your dependent information, that's where I said that you'll definitely need to know about that information um, from your book because you know you could ask your tax client, you know, are you a dependent? Um, if they're 35 years old, but they have a disability and they're living with their parents and they say, no, I'm not a dependent, um, they could really be a dependent living at home for whatever reason and they just don't know it. Um, but, you know, and their parents or parent or whoever they're living with is not with them to tell you otherwise, they don't know any better. So you have to make sure that you ask the right questions to identify um, who this person is and then, you know, what the filing status is and their personal information. So I'm single, I'd go in, just click. This is um, pretty straightforward. It's all the information that we'll be um, taking down from clients. The uh, questions down here too will be all information that you'll, it'll be talked about at the beginning sections of those books as well. So um, if they're 18 and a full-time student, you click there, that means that they're probably going to be a dependent. Um, and clicking one thing and then, you know, just because you put single um, and then clicking that, that will automatically register them as a dependent even though you might not have put them on there in a, at a different part. So all of these things kind of um, sometimes don't connect when you put in the information, so you have to make sure it's all accurate when you go in. Um, but yeah, I just wanted you to have that information. Um, these are going to be helpful resources for you as you get started. So when you look through the books and you want to actually see what it's going to look like doing a return, so that way you have um, an idea of what the system will look like, you can take that information from the practice book and put it into this system so that way you can see what it looks like to actually be preparing a return while you're taking your certification. Um, I think that'll really be useful for you in terms of getting ready for a tax time and also filling out um, the certification tests. Um, and as I said, you can just circle the little um, bubbles in the book. All right. And then other than that, um, I didn't have anything else to go over. Um, Joe and Ryan, I didn't know if you wanted to go over anything else, or? Do you have any questions, concerns, Yeah, I do. Joe, do you want to just go over like, the timeline of what you want us to do from here until this program begins? Uh, sure. Yeah. Did everybody sign in, by the way? And I'm just going to leave the roster right here. Okay. Um, so from here on, you go into your winter break. Uh, you do your training, you'll get the package that you have today, those are the tools that you'll be using for your training, so they're yours to keep. Um, and just a quick point on the packages, if you did accidentally take like more than one, please leave it on the table because there are people here who didn't get a packet. Um, so after you go into the winter break, you'll get your certification, you'll get certified. If you do not get certified, just please shoot me an email, Ryan an email, uh, you can shoot Susie an email, let us know. And then come January, we're going to have another meeting. But uh, Jovan, just re re rewind. So for you, how did you do it? Did you pick a week during winter break? Did you cram it when you got back second semester? Did you just spread it out and do it like beautifully three hours every day? Three yeah. Weeks? Oh, okay, so personally, I recommend starting as early as possible because it might not seem like a lot of information, but it is really dense, especially if it's your first time. Uh, I'm pretty sure Max and <laughs> Tyler, other people who've done it last year, could. Uh, their testament to that. The information is a lot to go through. Um, so I would start early. I, I personally did it like two days a week, but not like my entire two days, you know, like an hour or two each day. And keep in mind that we allot about 20 to 25 hours just for this portion. So you get 20 to 25 hours of credit, pro bono credit, just for the certification process. So that's on you if you want to take more than 25 hours or less than 25 <laughs> hours. But I would definitely regulate that time because it does take quite some time. It's definitely going to take you 
just a wow number, more than 15 hours for yeah. sure. More it's gonna take like, like I look at everyone's paperwork from yours. Yeah. It's really 20, like just so you don't underestimate it. But again, that's like half of you can you can count up to 25 hours of training towards your your pro bono service. After 25, you can't. And some people have told me it took them 30. And I'm sorry if it takes you 30, but do what you need to do. But we want to make sure like your actual service with people equals your training. So it's not like a program to just train for 50 hours. Yes. We want you to learn and actually do it. But it, it does take time. Yeah, it, it takes a lot of time, like Susie says. Um, so after you, I, like, if you have the discipline, you could do it in a week. But who's going to take an entire week out of their winter break just to do this? Um, <laughs> shame I. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I would say just pace yourselves, start early, do not wait until the week before the uh, you start back school because then you're just putting yourself under immense pressure. Uh, once you get certified or if you don't get certified, if you get certified, shoot us an email. So last year I think we emailed it, I'm not sure. Well ideally you'll upload them, I can't remember if I sent you guys the whole link, There's, there'll be a shared Google folder for this group. Ideally you upload your certifications right to that Google Drive so then I, Nick can just get in there and print them. If you, if you have to, you can drop them in my office and I can upload them. But I think that's the easiest way is to yeah. upload them right to um, the shared Google Drive. Yeah, so when you get certified, uh, about three certifications or two, I think, are just going to automatically print out. So those are going to be like evidence of your certification. Upload those into the drive and then you're all set. If you don't get certified, choose an email. Um, we'll help you. Only when, do it once. Do not go yeah. back to try to do it a second time. Just attempt the the uh, the the exam one time. Uh, we'll help you get certified if you don't get certified the first time. And I don't. know, Can we announce our next meeting or? Yeah, the next date. Yeah. Absolutely. I think okay. it may have been. It should be in the handout. I have it. January I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If we should announce it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the last page of the instructions or all the important dates. Okay. Yes. Um, so our next meeting, we're going to be here again, January 19th. That's a Friday. Um, we'll be here at 2.30 to 5. And for the vital, I like to call them vital veterans, that's our returners, you guys will be here just a little bit before, like an hour before, because we have something special for special you. Special lunch for the people um, who are returning. Yeah, for people who are returning. So that's incentive for Don't first worry. years to come again next year. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll have a training session again on the 19th. So that's, I mean, we're going to be helping people who didn't get certified to get certified. Yeah, and that training that. will be like very hands-on, because at that point you're going to be like, okay, I did the test, it feels really obscure and theoretical, like how do I do it? So we're yeah. going to like really teach you how do you do it, and also give you pointers on how to, how to work with difficult clients, how to tell a client they owe money, when they're agitated, and that, all that good stuff, it'll be much more like alive. And um, no, go for it. Um, just because if you do use the practice lab, make a login and go in the practice lab and do everything, like I said, with the certification, um, scenarios and whatnot there's still other things that you'll need to know so i would just wouldn't go in thinking like oh i did this this and this i'm definitely all set um definitely come to that training i think it's mandatory anyways but just so that way um i wanted to let you know that there's more things that we have to talk about other than just using the software yeah i mean so just a synopsis of the timeline so today we meet you go you do your finals and then you have christmas break um then you start getting certifi certified, you get the process of certification. Um, I mean, you could start anywhere. Some people start by practicing and then they look in the materials. Others start with the materials, however you want to do it. You get certified or you don't get certified. Uh, if not, you shoot us an email and then we'll meet again on the 19th. But the meeting on the 19th is a general meeting anyway. It's for everybody. Uh, you're all supposed to be here at 2.30. So you'll get an email closer to that day anyway, um, just to remind you. But that's pretty much a synopsis of where we go from here. And the only other thing is most of you got, should have gotten an email from me yesterday. If you didn't, it means that you signed up on a Google form probably later. So it's really important you sign in so we can get this roster cleaned up. Um, to sign up for your actual shifts, okay? And hopefully you'll understand that's a spreadsheet. You can move, your name might be itself, it's already populated, but just erase your name if you want to put yourself down for a different shift. Obviously, people have certain dates that they're going to miss, totally fine, unless you're going to miss like every other Tuesday. We will ask you like the week before if there's a date for your grandmother's 90th birthday party, let Nick know. But for now, just sign up for the shift that you want weekly so we get a sense of do we have too many people on a certain date or a certain location. Or if you want to do every shift like Curtis, you could go ahead and do that. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and do that. We, we welcome all the volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> and 
does anyone that knows they're going to be working with someone to do the training and you can just use one book to share it, um, uh, please just drop the book off. We can like just leave with one if you go if you know you're going to work with someone. Yeah, but if you took one an extra one today by accident, please just leave it because people here didn't get. You know, I think it's only fair that those who are here should get a book and those who are not should not. <laughs> There's a lot of great things going on today. So I'm sorry. Okay, that's it, guys. Uh, enjoy the pizza. Pizza left.